Hi, I'm Chad Lee with the Grain and Forage Center of Excellence. Welcome today, we're glad you're here. The Grain and Forage Center of Excellence is mostly housed at the Research and Education Center in Princeton, where we've done a massive expansion and renovation of our main building that's going to allow over 60 University of Kentucky faculty, students, and staff to research concepts and ideas that are relevant to citizens all across Kentucky throughout the region and some of it even beyond that as well. We welcome you today and we want you to understand that this Grain and Forage Center of Excellence is committed to food security through increased food production. We're also committed to environmental security and that is if we produce this food, we need to do it in a way that protects our waters, our streams, our soils and our environment. We're also committed to answering those questions that are relevant to our citizens within Kentucky. And so with that approach, we try to answer Kentucky questions first, and on occasion, some of those questions have regional, even national impact as well. So thank you for joining us today, and I look forward to you hearing what some of our experts have to show you. The University of Kentucky Research and Education Center has always had the best interest of farmers and heart here in Kentucky. It started in 1925 when a group of farmers and businessmen bought 400 acres of land to establish this place. And uh, it stayed small for many years until about the 1970s, and uh, there was a large influx of faculty, researchers, and extension specialists that uh, came in, and they really increased the amount of research and extension education that was done here. And uh, this area, this place, gained prominence and respect, not only throughout Kentucky, but through many of the states beyond. And uh, in 1980, the ag leadership of the state of Kentucky uh, built a nice building for us uh, with the laboratories and educational opportunities and uh, greatly increased our capabilities. And they also did that same thing in 2019. So out of that cooperative and symbiotic relationship, uh, a real good example of that would be um, uh, no-till agriculture. It was uh, a lot of the research and education for no-till agriculture and the establishment of it and the refinement of it was done right here at Princeton, Kentucky. It changed practices, it changed agriculture in Kentucky and in a lot of places in the nation. And it also changed uh, many parts of the world adopted this agriculture. So that's just one example, and I could cite many more that uh, has come out of this place and made a difference in agriculture in Kentucky and beyond. Hi, I'm Kirsten Wise, an extension plant pathologist with the University of Kentucky. And we're here today in our newly renovated University of Kentucky Research and Education Center in Princeton, Kentucky. And we're starting our tour in the Kentucky Farm Bureau lobby. And today we're gonna to be looking at our renovated lab wing and also our new conference center. We're standing outside of our Seamer Milling Company Conference Center in front of the Kentucky Corn Growers Gallery to look at some of the new rooms available for extension use. Now we're in a smaller meeting room that we can use thanks to the Halcom family. We're standing in the Farm Credit Mid-America classroom, which is set up so that students in Princeton can take classes simultaneously with students in Lexington. This is the demonstration classroom where we can have larger extension meetings and also classroom activities with hands-on learning. Now we're in the Kentucky Corn Conference Room where up to 200 people can attend extension meetings. Hi, I'm Katie Van Valen and I'm an extension beef specialist with the University of Kentucky. Now we're continuing our tour in our lab space. This is an example of some of the laboratory spaces that we have on at the station and this is the forage and animal science laboratory space. Now we're in the Integrated Pest Management Laboratory space, which is a space shared by faculty in the Entomology and Weed Science departments. So in addition to our faculty research labs here in the laboratory wing of the station, we also have two service labs. We have the Plant Disease Diagnostic Laboratory as well as the Soils Testing Lab, where producers and extension agents can submit samples for diagnostics. Now we're standing outside of the Plant Pathology Laboratory, which is shared by two of our plant pathology faculty here at the station. Now we're standing in front of the Clements Ag Supply Grains Agronomy Office, which is currently occupied by Dr. Carrie Knott. Uh, this is one of two of our sponsored offices that we have throughout the building. Now we're standing in the new office wing of our building, which is home to several faculty and staff offices, including the sponsored Peterson Farm Plant Pathology Office. This room to my left is 
uh, a small conference room, which can house up to four people for small meetings throughout the day. And now we're inside the Agriculture and Biosystems Engineering Laboratory. This unit that I'm sitting on here is a four-wheeler that's equipped with GPS to mark boundaries of fields for precision agriculture experiments here at the station. Now we're standing outside of the Horticulture Laboratory, which is a home to our faculty members working in the Horticulture Department. And they also have field labs and orchards and garden spaces throughout the station. Now we're standing outside of the Cook's Family Soil Lab, which is a soil, water, wet chemistry laboratory shared amongst three of our faculty members here at the station. Well, thank you all for joining us today on our virtual tour of the University of Kentucky Research and Education Center. On behalf of Dr. Weiss and I, we thank you for joining us today. It's always a pleasure to have people like you come to our, our Research and Education Center. We're so thankful you came and we look forward to you. You having a good day, and we look forward to you coming back again some other time. So thank you for being with us today. We appreciate that you got to visit the Grain and Forage Center of Excellence, the home of no-till for the entire world. We hope you come back and see us either online, on social media, or even better, come and stop by in person. We'd be glad to welcome you. I hope you enjoyed the tour of our main building that houses our uh, laboratory spaces and conference areas. But now we're gonna give you a tour of our beef related facilities here at the station. So directly behind me is a, a structure that if you've been to Beef Ash before, you've probably seen. Uh, this is what we call the back corral. It's our main working facility uh, for our cow herd. This is where we probably do about 90% of our our beef cattle handling is done through this facility behind me. Uh, typically, if we were having beef bash in person, we would have a tent set up near here. Um, we'd all be gathering together, but in the midst of COVID-19, we're doing this all virtually and we're learning to do things in a new way. So join me today while we take a look at the rest of our beef cattle facilities. Behind me, you'll see steers that are on a research trial in Dr. Chris Toich's program. They are in one of two sets of research paddocks that we have here at the station. And the paddocks behind me are specifically used to support Dr. Toich's research program. We are now standing at our second set of research paddocks that we have here at the station. This set of paddocks actually has 16 two acre paddocks. And half of those paddocks are gonna be a high end of fight fescue and the other half are gonna be a low end of fight fescue. And so this allows us to do uh, replicated fescue toxicosis research. And right now we actually have our bred heifers in these paddocks. They're due to start calving any day now, um, but they've been out here all summer long. Half of them have been on the high end of fight and half of them have been on the low end of fight. The other thing that these cattle have are uh, cow manager ear tags, which are like Fitbits for cattle. And so uh, those ear tags have been looking at their body temperature as well as their behavior all summer long. And so we're hoping to take a look at that data uh, later on and see if we can actually look at any um, differences in, in their behavior due to uh, the end of fight and pastures that they're on. So here we are at our newest cattle handling facility. This facility is actually still under construction, but it should be completed soon. And we can use it if we absolutely need to. This facility services both sets of our research paddocks that are located down here by the, our main building. Uh, so it allows us to be able to get cattle up if they're housed down here away from our other beef facilities. We're standing in front of one of our silos. Here at our beef unit, we typically feed corn silage as a winter feed stuff to our cattle. And so we'll typically feed that corn silage out from about January to March. Um, when we're filming this, it's late August, so we actually just got done chopping corn silage and putting it in there. Um, and so again, this is something that we, we utilize in addition to hay uh, to get us through uh, the winter. So we couldn't do everything that we do without our team of staff to help us with the daily care and management of our cattle out here. They also help us uh, when we're running research trials, collecting samples, um, and they really are uh, the backbone of, of our cattle operation here. And so I wanted to introduce you to our staff. 
Hi, my name is Blair Knight, and I'm a research specialist here at the UK Princeton Research Center. I've been here for 14 years, and my um, job, job is to just manage the cow herd on a daily basis here and oversee all of our research that we've got going on. Hi, I'm Billy Parrish. I work for the animal science and farm technician. I've been here for 35 years. Do anything that comes up to do with a cow on the farm and taking care of everything else. Hi, my name's Carl Inman. I'm a farm technician for the animal science. Uh, my daily routine is check cows, move to pasture, pastures, mow, tagging calves. This season will be, we had our first one this morning. So it's the beginning of an, another year for them. We're standing in front of one of our winter hay feeding structures that we have here. Uh, on our property and so what this allows us to do is easily feed hay to cattle during the winter um, because we've got a gravel drive that comes right up to this. Our guys can load uh, the round hay bales through here and then the cattle can come from multiple locations, from multiple pastures, access the single point on the concrete um, to consume that hay. And what that really does is it can cut down on some of those heavy traffic mud areas that we see uh, develop from our winter feeding programs. I wanted to take a moment and talk to you guys a little bit about a piece of technology that we utilize here at the station as well as at our uh, cattle facilities up in Woodford County, and that's the cow manager technology. So this pole behind me is actually a solar panel that uh, is used to relay a signal from the cow manager ear tags that our cattle wear, and that relays that signal back down to our main building uh, to a laptop where um, that information is sent to the company and processed, and that comes back to us uh, pretty quickly in the form of a smartphone app, and that smartphone app uh, sends us alerts for when cattle might be experiencing um, health issues or uh, when cattle may be coming into heat. And we actually have utilized that technology um, to let us know when calves have been, have been coming into heat as part of our breeding programs here. And so again, those are just small ear tags that sit uh, in the cow's ears. And they will tell us information such as the amount of time that that cow spends eating, being non-active, being active, highly active, or ruminating. They also measure ear surface temperature and they, again, they send all that information back to just a handy smartphone app that sends you alerts. Um, they'll let you know that something might be going on uh, with your cattle. And so it's something that not only are we using as a management tool, but we're also utilizing it in some of our research programs here at the station. Dr. Toich and I are running a research trial right now to look at the effects of hay storage locations and uh, the density at which hay bales were uh, bailed at to look at how that affects uh, storage and quality, storage losses in both uh, dry matter quantity and quality. We're standing inside one of the pens in our steer barn. Our steer barn here at the station has uh, 40 of these Kalen gate units that you can see behind me here. The Kalen gate units allow us to collect individual animal feed intake. And so what that does is it really allows us to have more power in our studies and be able to have fewer animals on a study when we're looking at differences in, in diets. And so um, each animal, when they're in these pens, will wear this key around their neck. And this key is set to open a, very, a specific door and the animals get trained and learn which door is theirs. And then they can go in there and receive their diet or their supplement from those Canlan Gate units. So again, we have 40 of those here in this barn, and then we've got some more out back that I'll show you in just a minute. In addition to the 40 Canlan Gates that we have inside of our steer barn, we also have an additional 48 Canlan Gates out here on pasture. So we actually have two sets of 24 each, and half of those are on a high end of fight fescue pasture, and the other half are on a low end of fight fescue pasture. That completes our tour of the University of Kentucky Research and Education Center, as well as our beef cattle facilities here in Princeton. I hope that you enjoyed uh, this virtual tour and wish that you could have been here in person, um, but I'll feel free to, to ask us any questions that you might have. Thank you for joining us.